What's up guys, Robert Deagle here, uh, back in Austin, Texas, training at B-Team, and I wanted to put up another YouTube video for you, this time showcasing uh, footage from a seminar that I taught at 10th Planet San Antonio about a year and a half ago, before the last North American trials, the West Coast trials that I did, okay? Um, before those trials, I was working for a pretty long time, maybe about a year, on developing a 50-50 game, all right? Early in my jiu-jitsu career, I was heavily discouraged by my coach from playing 50-50 because he argued it's a symmetrical position and therefore, um, you know, we shouldn't invest too much time into it because they have an equal amount of, of hypothetical chances of getting us as them, right? I actually agree with that criticism, but I disagree with the idea that we shouldn't be investing time into the position because regardless of whether it's our preferred attacking position, sometimes you are going to get put there, okay? So you have to have a game, all right? Now, in those West Coast trials, I actually eventually lost by 50-50, okay? Keith Kukorian got me with an inside heel hook. He's super dangerous from that position. He's the only person to ever catch me by inside heel hook in competition. Okay, so of course, like, I'm not going to argue that what I show in this video is foolproof and is always going to work. 50-50 is an inherently risky position. And I think the game that I outline in this, in this video, it's an open leg 50-50 game. That is a little bit risky. But the advantage to it is that, yes, it's a little risky, but it's also a very aggressive, very dynamic style of 50-50, which will lead to you gaining a lot of offensive success of your own. So yeah, Keith did get me, right? But I've also had a lot of success playing 50-50 in this way, either to attack them in the position or actually even to just get out of the position. It's easier to get out of the position when your legs are open. So yeah, I hope you guys find value in, in the seminar. I hope you guys enjoy. Please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me, know, let me know down below what other kinds of videos, what other sorts of techniques you guys wanna see. Uh, I appreciate the support. Thanks guys. So 50-50, obviously, right, like one of the criticisms people offer in this position is that it's symmetrical, right? Uh, I have the opportunity to attack him and he has the opportunity to attack me, right? So that's, it's seen as a downside. So like he gets the heel hook on me, right? We can both heel hook each other. The key to understanding this position is first understanding defense, right? Because if you only pursue offense when you don't understand how to keep yourself safe, you're essentially in like, you're in a situation where it's, it's, it's whoever just gets their attack first is going to win, and you don't want to be in a situation like that. You want to know how to be able to survive through his attacks and get eventually to your own, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is learn how to hide our heel here, okay? Whenever we're in a double-seated situation, that means that both my opponent and myself are seated, okay, and our legs are entangled. The main defense we're going to focus on is hiding our heel, okay? To hide your heel, what you want to do is point the back of your knee, into his hips, okay? So my leg can have essentially three points facing into his hips. We can have the side, we can have the front, or it can be the back of my knee facing into his hips. Now, if the front of my knee is facing into his hips, obviously it's really, really easy for Ilias to expose my heel, right? There's nothing you're gonna do here where you can hide your heel, okay? My heel is automatically exposed because of the way my knee is configured, like relative to his hips. If the side of my leg is facing, this is kind of like you each have a shot, okay? I might survive, I might not, right? You, you can get away with this for sure if you're good. But if you have the back of your knee facing into his hips, there's almost nothing he can do to expose your heel, okay? If he exposes your heel here, it's probably because there's a really big size discrepancy and you can also probably just mess up, okay? So we're going to start off by we're in a double-seated 50-50 situation. You'll notice also, and we'll talk about this later, I'm crossing my feet. I'm not triangling. Don't worry about that now, we'll go over it later. But for now, I want you guys to cross your feet. We take this hand, we grip the knee. Again, don't worry about why we're doing that. We're gonna cover that later. And then what I do is, I open up my legs and immediately I point my toes. So I point my toes like this. And we turn while pulling at the knee. And we point the back of our knee into his hips. At the same time, I'm retracting my secondary leg. Okay, so I've got my primary leg that's within his hips my secondary leg that's not within his hips, I pull that away, okay? We never open our legs like this, 
right? Because then he exposes our heel. Mm. Okay, you, you want to be able to open your legs. We're going to talk about that more throughout the seminar. Uh, in 50-50, if you only ever play with locked legs, closed legs, your 50-50 game is super, super limited. There's things you can do here, but it's, it's very limited. You want to be able to open your legs with confidence, okay? That's going to lead to sweeps, and it's going to lead to uh, counter leg locks as well, right? My, my own counter leg locks, okay? So I open up safely by pointing. As I open, I turn the knee so that the back of my knee faces into his hips. And at the same time, I'm pointing my heel. The most important thing is pointing the back of your knee at his hips. You could, like, right now I'm not pointing my toes, but my heel's still pretty safe, okay, because of the way my knee is pointed at his hips, okay? We're just doing this because it makes the heel a smaller target, right? When I point my toes, the heel comes into the ankle, whereas when I bring my toes towards my knee, look how big a target that is, right? We want the target to be as small as possible. Now, we're going to talk about later on, when he goes for ankle locks, this is not what we want to do, okay? This is obviously the opposite of what you want to do for an ankle lock. But the first thing we're thinking about is the heel up. Okay, so I'm here, I'm holding the knee, bringing this leg away, and as I'm opening, do this, do this really, really slow, guys. This is like a really important thing to get down because if you mess this up, you get heel hooked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't, if you're not like perfect with this, I mean, it's like, it's a thing that's pretty easy to get perfect once you get it down. But if you, like if you, if you're like, okay, I open, oh, no. <laughs> and you knew the next step was this, but you delayed, right? You need to open right away and be doing this. Does this make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Yeah, good. All right, so one more time. We're here. Grip the knee, ankles crossed, okay? Don't worry about why. We'll cover that later. You're going to hide the heel by pointing the back of my knee at his hips as I retract this leg, and I point my toes, okay? And you hold the knee, okay? Now you can test this out by, obviously, we're not going to do anything aggressive here, but Ilias is very lightly going to dig for my heel here. It should be really difficult as long as you continue to maintain this angle. Make sense, guys? Yes, sir. All right, let's get started. One, two, three. Now we're going to talk about why we're gripping this leg, and then the next thing we're going to talk about is why we're pulling this leg away, okay? So we're gripping this leg because what Ilias realistically wants to do is, if the back of my knee facing into his hips is what I want as the defensive man, what do you think Ilias wants? He wants the opposite, right? He wants his hips facing into the front of my knee. So what he's going to do is, uh, so Elias, just climb up real slow. No, no, no. I spin to catch my heel. Good. Keep going. Catch my heel. Good. So what Elias just did was he brought his hips up, and we're going to talk about this a lot, the battle of hip height in a double-seated leg entanglement. Okay, he raised his hips, and he spun the leg. Okay, so like really he'll come back. If it's harder for him to do that, okay, but you're not going to stop him from doing that by grabbing his leg. Like if I grip here and I just stay in one spot and then he goes, so same thing like this. Yeah, my hand is, I'm not gonna stop that. But what you're doing is you're 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 racing, right? He wants soup, so real light, we're gonna spin. He wants to catch my heel, right? Spin this way. And so we're spinning, right? And there's a race where what I wanna do is I wanna maintain the back of my knee facing into his hips. And so gripping here, what this does is if my hand not touching his knee is the race is like this. The hand gripping his knee means I'm here, right? So like, right, I'm cheating. I'm cheating in the race, right? So I'm holding here, and then when he goes to spin, I slow, see how I slow him down just a little bit. We come back. What he wants to do is he wants this knee to go down. Go. He, I can still definitely survive here if I'm like knowledgeable. Come back. We're just making things a little bit easier for ourselves. So we go here, and now what he's going to do is. He wants to, instead of having his hips face the back of my knee, he wants to have his hips face either the side or even better would be the front. So un unlock your legs as he does. Yeah, go outside Sankaku. Outside Sankaku. Yeah, the foot goes here. Good. Now put this knee down. Good. Now flow off of this hip. This would be he completely won the race. Like, I, I, I got caught, right? Here, his hips are facing into the front of my knee. Okay? And I can't, so his back is exposed, but I can't take his back because look at how his legs are going to they're over my thigh. How would, I, how would I take his back here? Right? It's, it's not realistic. He's able to catch my heel because his hips are facing in the front of my knee. So this is pretty bad for me. Okay? We keep him from getting to that point by spinning with him. And gripping here is going to help us be able to spin with him uh, faster than he can spin after us. Okay? So what we're going to practice is we take our hand, we grip. Okay? My elbow comes back. Now he's going to roll. You guys do this very slow at first because it's going to be difficult initially. He spins, and we spin with him. And the goal is to continue to maintain 
this relationship where the back of my knee faces into his hips. What we don't want to happen is he spins faster than me, and now because he, say that, because he spun faster than me, his hips were able to rise over mine, and he was able to point his hips at either the side or even worse, I like a little now fold this into the floor, the front of my knee. Right, the side of the knee is bad. Come back up. The side of the knee is bad. Like over heel again. I'm going to your head again. The front of the knee is even worse. Like, like, how am I going to hide my heel there? It's like completely, you know, uh, like unrealistic. Come back. So what you want to do is keep him from getting to that point. So I go here. He spins. We spin with him. Okay, make sense, guys? Good. Good. All right, let's get started. One, two, three. This angle, right? This is his goal, right? One way I can stop him from doing that is if I can get a good control on the secondary leg. And we're gonna talk, when we get to offense, we're gonna talk a lot about this, okay? If you can control the secondary leg, it's gonna be way harder for him. So when Ilias goes to spin, he can still spin, but obviously it's way harder to spin at the pace that he needs to to keep me from spinning his leg, right? We'll talk more about that later on. Uh, but just for now, it's important to know. Okay, so rotate. So that I, I know, then I want to keep this leg away from him. Okay? I don't want him to get a scoop grip, which is like an underhook on the leg, and I don't want him to get an over wrap grip either. Okay, both of these are bad. Okay, but I would say the scoop grip is worse for me. Because now his elbow is in a position to go back, go back, and catch a heel. Okay, if it's, if it's an over wrap grip, it's bad because it I can't spin now, but he can't immediately get a heel hook. So it's not like as immediately dangerous, okay? It's still bad, but it's not as bad as it could be. Okay? So what we want to do is, we want to get that leg away from him. Okay? Now, a lot of like inexperienced 50-50 battles look like this. You have two guys that are just trying to open each other's legs like this, right? Because nobody has the confidence to open up their legs, okay? If you can open up your legs and stay safe, you can keep this leg away from him, and he will not have the ability to restrict your movement as much, okay? Movement is the key to success in 50-50. Okay, if you understand how to move, Fluidly, you can succeed in 50-50. Like, you can definitely succeed with locked legs. It's definitely possible, but it's way harder, okay? It's just like if you're playing close guard, right? What's going to be a more powerful offensive close guard? A close guard where you can dynamically move your hips to attack different things, or a close guard where you're just, like, squeezing tight because you're scared of, like, him. Like, if you ever open your close guard, he stands up and runs away, you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> he got out, right? It's the same thing here. If you lock your legs because you're scared of getting leg locked, Right? If your only way of staying safe is with locked legs, you're never going to be able to like dynamically attack. Okay, so that's why the first thing we did was was this basic defense, and now we want to talk about getting this leg away from him. Okay, so we get this leg away from him, and we have our hands here positioned for him. If if uh, if he, uh go back, sorry. If he reaches to this uh, this leg, he reaches to this leg, and you push away. Okay. Now what we're going to look at is he's going to take an ankle lock grip on this leg. That's what people will pretty frequently do when they can't get a control of this leg, okay? There's a couple reasons he's gonna do this. First of all, it's just a good control, okay? You might not even be looking for the submission. It could just be a good control. But also, there's a good submission. So, no, 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 let's go angle lock. Go shallow, shallow. And put your feet on my hips. Okay, this can definitely be really strong. It's not a heel hook. It's not the worst submission you can get put in, but it's, it's not good. We don't want that to happen, okay? For him to get the ankle lock, he's going to have to go really, really low on my ankle, and the elbow needs to come back, okay? And then he's probably going to want to get his feet on my hips for the, uh, for the bridge, probably more like this, okay? Make sense, guys? He can't really finish an ankle lock like this, okay? And he can't finish an ankle lock also if the elbow can't come back, okay? So as soon as I feel, so I'm here, I kept this leg away from him, so let go of this for one second. I kept this leg away from him and I feel an ankle lock grip coming on. He can't grip low right away. Can you just come back? Look where my ankle is. It's against his torso, right? right I'm, not, I'm not here. Okay, so here he could go low. Actually, actually, it would be pretty hard still. Yeah, you couldn't actually. So he can't grip low, so he's got to grip high and then he has to go low. Keep going, keep going. And then he can get what he wants. Okay, come back. As he's doing that, I put my foot on my foot. Okay? This is first of all gonna make no we'll take this way. This is first of all gonna make it really, really hard for him to finish the ankle lock because he can't retract the elbow back. Right? My foot is blocking that. So when this happens, then he goes, okay, I can't finish the ankle lock. 
Okay, by the way, guys, this might like hurt really bad still, but your foot is not gonna break. If you can't bring the elbow back, your foot is not gonna break, okay? Like I've been, I've had like really, really strong, like aggro guys in competition. Like, yeah, <laughs> you've been there for some of these. Like, where the elbows, he's trying to like break my foot, but as long as you have this, it might hurt, but you're not gonna get broken. You just gotta have the confidence that you plant the foot here, the ankle lock is not gonna, it's not gonna break your leg. Now, if you're dealing with Tex Johnson and some dude who's like 250 pounds, okay, I don't wanna like, <laughs> I don't wanna say it'll never happen, but it is very difficult, okay? So anyway, we're here. He's probably gonna realize, okay, the ankle lock is not working anymore. What's the next thing you think he's gonna look for? Probably gonna be a heel hook. So when, the, so when he goes back to the heel hook, what I wanna do is take this toe and put it inside his bicep, okay? Now that was available because, go back, that was available because to get the heel hook, he, he opens up and he goes in here. So I push, and I'm gonna pop my foot on top of his shoulder, okay? Where he's now in a situation where he can't get a heel hook, okay? So we're here, we, uh, go back step. we start off by hiding, right? What he's probably gonna wanna do, what we're gonna look at later, is he's probably gonna wanna take a scoop grip here so he can start advancing positionally and looking for heel hooks. Okay, so we deny him that opportunity by hiding our heel. We open up our legs with confidence because we know how to stay safe with open legs. Okay, we hide the heel by rotating the back of our knee to face his hips. We bring our secondary leg away from his arms. The two main things we're trying to avoid are immediately giving heel exposure through like an unforced error where we just, like we made a mistake. He didn't really do anything proactively to force this to happen. We just didn't really know how to keep ourselves safe. Here we deny that, that error by being defensively savvy. We keep our secondary leg away from him and he's not able to advance the way he wants to. Okay, now the next thing he looks for is he takes an ankle lock. We want to keep him from being able to draw the, the wrist down to the ankle. Now this is where danger begins. Okay, here, this is not gonna work anymore. You're not gonna get that foot in place. Right here, you've gotta focus on like coming towards him and hand fighting, okay? But we wanna, we wanna go a little, uh, Earlier than that, here, I go foot to foot. Yeah, let go for one second. You guys see what I'm doing with my foot? This foot like curls down. I'm still hiding the heel, and then this foot covers. Okay, what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm making it hard for him. See how I'm occupying the space behind this elbow? That elbow can't come back. Now it can. Yeah, that's where the danger begins. You're here, and it goes back. Now when he fishes for the heel hook, you pop that foot in there. You can sometimes even like, I, I've even done this sometimes too. Even if he doesn't, see how there's like a little bit of space here? If you can get your big toe in there, do you guys see, oh, keep the lock, keep the lock. Do you guys see what my big toe is doing? Okay, As, if you can get that in there, you can do what, what I'm doing here, sit up again. Where we go for a toe slip. Okay, so you've got, I'm sure you guys have heard of heel slips, right? Right, a heel slip is where the heel slips over the wrist. Then we also have toe slips with the toes slip in front of the bicep, okay? In 50-50, I think toe slips are better, all right? So we're here, he takes the ankle lock, we go here, he reaches back, we pop our toes in front of his bicep, and then we can get the toes of the primary leg in front of the bicep and on top of his shoulder, okay? Make sense, guys? All right, let's get started. One, two, three. One of his goals that we were talking about was that he wants to get a scoop grip on this leg, right? And we keep him from being able to do that by keeping our leg away. But now he takes an ankle lock. And now to defend the ankle lock, what did I do? I put the foot here. Okay, now I put the foot back where he can grab it, right? So now, an intelligent opponent, like if someone goes for a heel, heel hook here, I'm sure like what a lot of you guys are thinking is like, why would anyone do that? Yes, I, I agree, you shouldn't be doing this here, but people will still do it. That's why I do this, he goes to the heel. And we do the toe slip. So what we just did there was an inside pummel with our left foot, keep going, into a toe slip. Now what we're gonna look at is, here he reaches for a scoop grip on this leg. This is what he should be doing. Okay, this is a much more intelligent effort. Keep going, get the scoop grip. If he, if he gets a scoop grip, okay, this is not the end of the world. There's still plenty of things we can do here, okay? Uh, but we obviously don't want him to get here. Okay, so come back. So we're here. Now I feel him reaching, instead of for the, the, the heel hook here, he's reaching for this. And when I see this happening immediately, right, as soon as the wrist Go back to here. As soon as the wrist moves away toward, uh, from the primary leg towards the secondary leg, I know he's reaching for a scoop grip on this leg. 
Okay, so what I want to do is, instead of an inside pummel, because I can't inside pummel anymore because his wrist is in my way, I'm going to outside pummel. Okay, so I'm here, the knee retracts, and I outside pummel. And we're in effect doing like pretty much the same move. So he goes here, but you have to like, we have to be very aware of what he's doing with his arms, right? Like, if I let him get this scoop grip, it's not the end of the world, we're gonna talk about what to do here, but obviously you now he's sort of like gotten to his next step, right? Which is not what we want. Come back. So we're here. So he reaches here. As soon as I see this drifting, as soon as I see that, there's realistically only one thing he's doing. He's trying to grab this leg. So I bring the knee back. So it's, it's again, this is like kind of another race, right? I'm bringing the knee back, and I'm pummeling to here. Okay? Now, I pop the foot in front, and he can't heal with me. And we're going to talk about why we're doing this later. This is for, we're going to start to shift into our own offense. We're going from defense into offense, okay? Which is the key to 50-50. Okay? So we come back. I'm here. He knows his, what he would have liked to have been able to do is get a scoop grip on this leg just to start. Right? But we made that hard for him. If he does get it, we're going to talk about you strip and we get away. We'll talk more about that later, okay? So we're here, and he goes for that, but we kept it away. Okay, now the next best thing is an ankle lock. We block him from finishing the ankle lock. We saw how to stop kind of a naive heel hook here where he just digs for it. But now a more intelligent opponent goes for this. Knee comes back, foot comes in front, push, and we get a foot in front. The reason why this is safe, guys, is he can't heel hook me here as long as my foot's on his bicep, right? Even if he's able to catch my heel here, uh, your foot is in a good position to toast line, okay? So we're here, uh, start from the beginning with an ankle. Here, he goes through. Knee comes back, outside pummel. If it goes for the heel hook right away, we go inside pummel. Okay, we're always trying to occupy the, the, uh, like the position at his bicep with our foot, okay? That's what's gonna make it easy for us to toe slip. So he goes here, we go outside pummel, okay? We push, and then the foot goes in front. And if we, if we really mess up, and he manages to catch our heel, you're still like, so here you can put your toe in, and you can pop the toes out. Does that make sense, guys? I mean, obviously we don't want that to happen, but worst case scenario, you, we do have toe slip options that are available to us there. Okay, so we're here. One last time. He can't, we, if we don't put the foot there and we're seated, he has a really good opportunity to ankle lock us, okay? So the other way you could stop him from getting the ankle lock is by coming up, and we're gonna talk about that later on, but for now, we're mainly concerned with double seated stuff, where we're both seated. So the best way to stop him from finishing this ankle lock in a double seated situation is to go here. You could also come forward in hand fight, but the problem with this is my hands are now occupied with hand fighting, and I can't start looking at counters, right? Like we want to start shifting into counters, right? If I'm here, I can't. I, there's no way I can leg lock him if my hands are occupied with hand fighting. Okay? If, I mean, if I feel like I'm gonna get broken, that is of course what I'll do. But I'd rather do that with my feet so I can have my hands free to attack. Okay? So anyway, we're here. He's not going for this one, where he just goes to the heel right there. That's going to lead to the inside pummel. Instead, he's going for the scoop grip on the secondary leg. So we go outside pummel, and we get to the same position. Okay? Make sense, guys? All right. Let's get started. One, two, three. So far, we've looked at keeping ourselves safe. The, the main focus has been keeping the back of our knee facing into his hips uh, and maintaining this as he spins, right? And then we also talked a lot about keeping him from getting control of his secondary leg. Then we talked about progressing to having our foot on his shoulder, okay? The main reason we're looking to do that is because um, what we want to do to start attacking him in 50-50 uh, when it comes to heel hooks is we want to get into a position where we can, uh, so how do you it? Where we can climb on top, okay? Because if I can climb on top, if I can gain hip height, what I can do is I can alter the position of my hips in relation to his knee, right? So what I can do is here, my hips are facing the side of his knee, and if I slip all the way through, they face the front of his knee. And then I can catch his heel really easily. Okay? But to do that, so rotate again. To do that, the first step is gonna be I gotta get my foot on his stomach. Right? How do I do that here? I pull it back, and you always you always wind up exposing your heel. Now what you'll see a lot of people do, and this 100% gonna work, 
and just don't keep your legs locked, like regular 50 50. They'll go like here, and they'll put this foot up, and then they'll go here. Does that make sense, guys? And they went here. So he can't heal up because this leg is blocking it. But what I run into a lot when I do that is he grabs his ankle lock. He's not going to finish that, but now I just heal. I can't climb on top because he's holding my leg. Right? It's really, really difficult. Okay? <clears throat> so what we're looking at here is we go for some reach for the scooper for his leg. Outside pummel or, I don't know, come back. No, ankle lock. Or inside pummel, and we get here. The advantage of having your leg here is that look what this foot can do. It can come back and go on his stomach without ever being behind his tricep. If it's not behind his tricep, then there's no chance he can heal him here, right? So if my foot is here and I bring it back, yep, that's right there, right? You've got this option, which is this is definitely really good, and a lot of people do this, but the reason why I don't like this. Is because if he holds that ankle lock, man, you have a lot of people who will keep you from being able to spin here. Okay? It's pretty difficult. Okay? So instead, we're fighting to get this foot up here. Okay? So we hide. Okay, let's just reach for this. We'll do an outside pummel. <coughs> we post and we get here. Okay? Now, what a lot of people are going to do at this point is they're going to crowd towards you. Okay? He comes towards me and he's starting to crush me. What I want to do is get this foot on the stomach. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm holding onto his legs, and now I take my left leg, and I go underneath. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my left leg. I'm using the side of my ankle to push as I pull my right leg back, and I get that on his stomach. Okay? So from the beginning, um, however you guys get the foot on the shoulder, we get here. Okay, now what he does is he goes to crush you. Right? He goes to crowd me. I take my hands, I go left hand on this leg, right hand on the secondary leg, and now what I do is I take, I take my right leg and I go underneath, and now I'm gonna push, and I can pull my right leg back. What he wants to keep, the, the whole point, the reason he's crowding me, so I'll take this way. Guys, the reason he's crowding me is because he knows, like at this point, if he brings his chest away from me, like that's gonna happen, right? And then if that happens, he knows I'm gonna go this way. But right? we're assuming that he's a knowledgeable 50-50 opponent, okay? Or he might just be like really big and strong and wants to crush you there. Like that happens too, right? So we're here. He doesn't want my foot to get on his stomach, so he comes towards me. Man, this can be like this can be really, really annoying. So we're gonna take our left leg, I go underneath, and now I'm pushing. I, it's not pushing him, right? Like I'm not like pushing his torso with my leg. I'm pushing myself against him. Does that make sense, guys? Right here. Uh, good jujitsu. Is usually about moving yourself around the other guy. You, you, you are going to move him as well, but more so you're going to move yourself around him rather than just moving him, okay? So again, we're here. I get to here. We're here. I'm holding on to both his legs. But remember, like, this is what we were fighting to keep him from getting. And now we are working towards getting that, okay? If at this point he hides his heel and retracts his leg away from me, he's giving me this, okay? Now... He, I, if I was him, this is what I would do. I think this is more intelligent, okay? Um, but it does give me this here, okay? So come back. So we're here, we'll take it. So we're here. I'm gonna take my left leg, I go underneath, and I'm gonna extend. Um, I'm sure what some of you guys are thinking right now is, what if he heel hooks you here? Like, don't even respect that, just hide your heel. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is not real. Now, if you, if you just like sit here, like, yeah, okay, <laughs> yes, now then it can become real, but like, think, think, of, think about what the motion of my left leg is doing anyway. I'm essentially hiding my heel. Does that make sense, guys? Right, so, yes, if you are like half asleep and you grab your foot here, there's a guy from Kazakhstan named Usman Kasimov. If you guys watch the Asian trials, we were actually talking about Kasimov on the drive here. He actually loves this finish. Like, I've seen him break people with this, but it's mostly because, like, people are waiting. You know what I mean? Like, if we're here, let go. If, the second I bring this foot across, see how my toes are pointed? Like, I'm hiding my heel there, right? Now, when he goes to the heel, look. See what I just did? I pointed the back of my knee at his hips. So I'm, I'm, like, moving myself around him the way I want offensively, but I'm also hiding the heel at the same time. 
Okay, like this is the key to like good 50-50. I want you guys to see how defense and offense are always like, we're always like bouncing back and forth between them, okay? Anyway, so now we're here, and now we have an outside triangle, okay? Or an outside synchopter. And from here, we're gonna start attacking, but we'll get there next. All right, so one more time. We got on top of his shoulder, okay, with our foot. However we did. Now he knows if he moves away from me, bang, that goes right there, right? He's giving it to me, okay? So he doesn't want to give me that. He wants to crush me, okay? So what I'm going to do is, while I'm holding his legs, I take this leg and I go underneath. I'm pointing my toes as soon as I do that, so even if he does think about heel hooking this leg, we're just going to rotate. It's going to be real, really, really hard for him to get any kind of real breaking pressure. And as I do that, I am pushing my own body against his to get my foot here, okay? And now from there, we're gonna see uh, what our next offensive steps are gonna be. All right, make sense, guys? Let's get started, one, two, three. Face two different possible situations, and we're gonna move towards getting a heel okay? So we've gotten into a situation where we have an outside Senkaku, and we have control of his secondary leg. Now, we're usually gonna see one of two things happening. He's either gonna be hiding his heel, like so, or he's not hiding his heel, in which case usually his leg is like curled like this. Okay, this is gonna change what I'm gonna do. If he's hiding his heel, you'll notice that the back of his knee faces into my hips, so heel exposure is not immediately available, but there's like a pretty straight path for my hips to travel, right? I can, we've been talking about this, right? I can climb my hips up. Does that make sense, guys? Like I can raise my hips over his, and I can start looking for heel exposure. And heel exposure is gonna come as a result of my hips rotating around his leg. And that's gonna come as a result of being able to gain hip height, okay? But before we get into that, let's deal with when he doesn't hide his heel. Now the advantage from his perspective of not hiding his, of hiding his heel here, okay? I guess he is kind of hiding his heel in a sense by putting his foot on the floor, but he's not hiding it in the way that we've been talking about with the back of the knee facing into my hips, right? The advantage of like doing this is like it's way harder to climb on top, right? Like this is like a barrier, right? If he were to point his shin all the way this way, Obviously this is dumb because I can catch his heel right here, but think about it. If I wanted to climb, just keep your shin here, this is really hard, right? It's in my way. So if he plants his foot and he just makes this like a really hard surface for me to climb over, this can actually be a really intelligent option, okay? So what we're gonna do here, every time I say intelligent option now, I think of that dust guy. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you're gonna that guy, Detroit River Survival Training. All right, anyway, so anyway. <laughs> So from here, we're gonna do two different things. You have two different intelligent options to increase your survivability <laughs> in this situation. <laughs> okay. So the, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this hand, and it's right now I'm gripping the secondary leg. We're gonna go under the primary leg and re-grip the secondary leg. Okay? Now I'm gonna take this hand and I'm gonna make a shotgun grip. You see what it, does this make sense, guys? Shotgun grip, right? And now I'm gonna go this way and catch the heel. So we never actually like I never climbed, I never climbed on top, right? Because I didn't have to. What I had to do here was, I, what you don't want to do is this, guys. We don't want to just start reaching for the leg here, yep, because then he's going to go right into that because you let go of control of this. Right? We, fought, we fought so hard to get our legs over here and to hold this leg. He brings this leg away, and we're back to square one. He's doing the defense that we talked about at the beginning of the zone. It's like, man, it's... You lost so much progress, right? This isn't the end of the world. We are going to talk about what to do when this happens. You still have good options, but you, it's definitely like a step back. You've lost some control, right? So we come back. Look at this space right here. This is what we want to exploit. And if we can, we don't want to lose control of this leg. So I go under and I grip here. So I still have a good grip of this leg. Now I keep this left hand on the knee and my right hand goes to a shotgun grip here, okay? Now I turn this way. Keep your foot flat on the floor for me, dude. I turn this way, and it's gonna make it hard for him to keep the foot totally flat on the floor, okay? And now I'm gonna go, I bridge in, my elbow comes back, and I catch the heel. When we catch the heel, look at my elbow. This is not what we want. You never want the elbow lined up with his leg. That's gonna make it super easy for Ilias to slip. It's very, very easy for that, okay? So the grip we're gonna work on is gonna feel weird at first, okay? When I was first taught this, it felt like very loose, but once you understand how to use it, it's the tightest possible grip you can get. Okay, so we catch with the heel at our wrist and the toes very low, like on our bicep, 
like so. Does this make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. It's not in our armpit, okay? You can definitely succeed with it in your armpit, but I think it's, it, it's gonna get a lot tighter if it's low. The reason is that what I'm gonna do is bring my elbow, you okay? Yeah. yeah. So my elbow goes back and my wrist draws into my chin. So, sorry guys. <laughs> so right here. Now if it's high in my, the toes that is, if it's high in my armpit, it's a little, like, it doesn't feel as tight when I bring my elbow back, right? Yeah, it's, I mean like, look, it's still tight, right? Yeah, it's yeah. lower, right? So like this. Right there, it seems like it's torquing a lot more. It has a lot more to travel that way. Yeah, I think so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're here. How does that feel? <laughs> <laughs> so look, that, see how that elbow comes back, guys? Not this. This is this is bad. You can, of course, finish people here, but it's not really as strong as it can be. We want, do you guys see, all the, see this right here? Mm -hmm. right, the elbow comes back. Yeah, it looks like Yeah, it's strong, right? And the, the wrist is going to come to my chin. Okay, now here, to finish, what I do is, actually, we'll talk, let's talk about the finish later. Let's just right now focus on control with the grip. So the heel is not, not here. Yes, sir. It's here. Yeah. And now the toes are, uh, sorry, I'm pushing the toes back. The elbow comes into my hip, my right elbow. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, not this. It's going to, I'm sure it's going to feel like a weird kind of loose grip, all right? Like, Instinctively, this feels tighter, okay, when it's in the armpit. And there, I mean, at the end of the day, sometimes you're in like a like a tough scramble, and like you catch this, like don't sit there and be like, oh, tinker in this. <laughs> no, they definitely still work like this, right? But when you get a feel for catching with it low, and then bringing the elbow back, it's just going to increase the strength of it. All right. So again, from the beginning, we're here. He didn't hide the heel in the conventional way. Like so. The advantage of what he's doing now is <coughs> planting here. I know people that do this that are like very good 50 50 players. So this isn't like, this isn't like a dumb strategy, okay? Um, there's advantages to this. The big advantage is it's so hard for me to gain hip height. So he's trying to deny me hip height. Um, but the weakness of it is that it's definitely less mobile, right? He can't, so like if he plants the foot, how is he gonna move, right? He's committing himself to this position here, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna exploit that by going under, leg grip here. If I can, I'd like to get my hand like all the way wrapped around the knee, but what sometimes you'll see is they'll start to, to like, they'll turn the knee out towards them, right? And like this might be what you have to accept, but that's okay, we can still look at this. If you feel like you're totally losing your left hand on his knee, you can grip your own shit. You can see what I'm talking about? So we would like to get here, he starts to point the knee that way, as much as you can. Okay, you've lost it, you hold this. And then we, we hold on to here up until we grip here. We make our shotgun grip. This is, this is not optimal because we did lose the leg. So I would prefer not to have to do this, but you can definitely still catch the heel in the way we did. Okay, make sense guys? All right, so one more time from the beginning. We're here and now we have control of his secondary leg and we fought our way to a good outside triangle position. All right, now he's hiding his heel. Hide your heel. Here, he can't stop me from climbing on top. So what he does is he recognizes that and he goes here, plants the foot on the floor. If he doesn't plant the foot on the floor, if the foot is drifting, just obviously you don't need to do any of this. You can just catch, okay? But if he does do this, we go under here and you grip as far around the knee as you can. If you could get like this, that would be really, really good. Okay, this is really, really tight. Now you catch the shotgun grip, we turn this way and the key is to bridge while my elbow comes back and my heel pops under. Is that, can you guys see what happened there? I don't know if it's difficult to see. So one more time. Yeah, without, without, without the leg, it'll look like this. See how the elbow comes back? And as soon as, that, as soon as we catch, the elbow comes into the hip and the wrist comes to my chin. And what we don't want to do is this. Don't do this, guys. This is, this is very, very bad. You can lean, that's okay we don't go all the way down. That's gonna make it easier for him to point his toes. And now you start to lose the grip. You wanna be here, elbow coming into your hip, wrist drawing into your chin. Make sense, guys? Yes? All right, let's get started. One, two, three. Climbing the hip when he doesn't use this type of defense. So remember, guys, when you get to this outside Senkaku position, you're gonna face usually one of two types of things. He's either gonna have the knee high and the foot planted, 
in which case it's hard to climb, but there's a lot of space underneath that you can exploit, right? Or he's hiding the heel, in which case here, if you were to try to do this, this is really, really like unrealistic, okay? Look, look at all the space there is between my hand and his secondary leg, right? This is really, really tough. Okay, I definitely would not recommend that. But you don't need to, because in this case, there's no reason you can't start climbing on top, uh, provided you're controlling the secondary leg. If you lose control of the secondary leg, all of this stuff is gonna stop working, okay? But we'll, we'll turn to what we should do in that situation later. So here, I've got a good control of the secondary leg at his knee and at his ankle, okay? There's a couple different ways we can control here. We can, get with, we can have a loose grip, like so, or we can have a really tight grip, like this. Okay, so loose or tight, and there's advantages to each, okay? The advantage to a loose grip is that it's gonna be easier to get your knee inside, okay? What we wanna do is start climbing on top, and if we can, we wanna get our knee inside either here, or it's gonna be here to the outside, okay? Either can work, okay? I prefer to be inside, though. Now, the advantage to a tight grip is that it's gonna be harder for him to pull this leg away. If he's good, the whole time we're holding here, what he's realistically gonna be doing is this, okay? Because he realizes he messed up, okay? What he wanted to do from the start is what we did at the start, which is hide the heel. Yep, like, like this, right? This is what we started off the seminar with, right? So we wanna actively make it difficult for him to do that, okay? This type of a grip, a loose grip, as he pulls, pulls, I can't stop him from pulling it back, but I can slow it down, okay? Here, I can stop it, right? But the weakness of this is that it's, it's definitely gonna be, it's pretty much impossible to get our knee inside, okay? So let's do the loose one first. So I'm here, when he goes to pull the leg away, I start to come up and I put this knee to the inside, okay? Now, this left hand goes to here, or to here. So it started here, as he's pulling it away, I'm holding it, I come up, and I turn my hips to come on top, and I'm holding the knee uh, and the ankle like so. Now, what's probably gonna happen is he's gonna continue to pull this away. Right, come back. As that's happening, my left hand goes either here or here. They're both like pretty good control points. Now, I'm gonna rotate, and my hand, sw uh, don't move. My hand switches to this. See what I'm doing, guys? Yeah. Right, now you catch your elbow from that. What we did was, we did a full rotation of my hips around his leg. So now my hips face the front of his knee. This is, this is very similar to a backside 50-50, guys. It's not exactly the same, but it's very, very similar, okay? Here, because my hips are facing the front of his knee, if Ilias goes to hide his heel here, hide your heel here, it's pretty much impossible. Okay, we're gonna catch, when we catch, don't use your wrist, use your palm. Okay, we call this a false grip or a football grip. This is more for control. You're, you're not gonna finish the guy here, so don't worry about like ribbing a heel up here. We're just gonna catch. Okay, now we're gonna rotate back. We're gonna get our finish, okay? We're gonna talk more about the rotation back with, in the next move. For now, let's just focus on getting to the position and catching. And we're catching with a false grip, which is the palm facing our, our face rather than the wrist facing our face. That is gonna make a really big difference, all right? So anyway, see he's hiding again, and we have loose grips, okay? With loose grips, the advantage is it's easier to get our knee inside, okay? The advantage of getting your knee inside is that both your shins are gonna be on top of his thigh. That's gonna slow down his, his roll, like a lot, obviously, right? So we're here, but the weakness is that he's almost definitely gonna be able to pull the knee away from me. We're dealing with a situation where my arms are battling his leg. His leg is stronger than my arms. Unless you're like way bigger than the guy, that's always gonna be the case. So he's pulling this away, you can't stop that. What you can do is you can slow it down. You can slow it down enough, you can get here, and then get here. Guys, also don't expect to land here, so don't move. Don't expect to land here and be able to like, okay, let me take my time to catch this. What's gonna happen in real life is, the second you land here, he's gonna be spinning this way. Because he wants to get out of that situation. Right, like he wants the high tail out of there, and he wants to, he wants to, take the back of his knee and point it at my hips, okay? So we're here, he pulls this leg away. We're dealing with like essentially like windows of opportunities. You're creating windows of opportunities 
you got to punch through those windows as soon as you create them. So here, here, and then stop here, don't move. You back elbow and catch. And look what my palm is doing. I catch like this, not like this. If you're like this, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the next one. We catch here, okay? When I land, what I have to expect is I've got to catch right away because he's going to be rotating this way, okay? Sometimes you'll catch and there will be a little control coming back this way, but you have to expect that what he's going to try to do is to come back this way. And you want to catch before he can do that. Does that make sense, guys? Yes? All right. So now let's talk about the second scenario, which is he sometimes like he's not trying to pull his knee towards his face. Sometimes he's bringing his feet together. Okay. Sometimes he'll deliberately do this, and we'll have to go for this type of grip. Or sometimes <laughs> you just feel like that he's so explosive, he's so strong that loose grips are just like it's really hard to make that work. So you want to go tight grips. Now the disadvantage is. It's going to be really hard to get my knee in there. The advantage is this is much more controlling. Okay, so now what we're going to do is when we climb up, my knee comes to the outside. Okay, now this hand is still on the inside. I never climb like this. Like, this is definitely like really controlling, but if I climb on top like this, first of all, it's really awkward, but second of all, like, I can't dig for the heel here. So you need to have this under, right? This is going over and gripping the, the shin of the primary leg. My left hand, right? Now the right hand goes underneath the ankle like so. And we come up here. Now once you're here, it's gonna be really hard to like get this knee inside. We're not gonna worry about that. I just take my left hip, I'm gonna bring it to the floor. My left hand goes to the ankle and look. Even though his knees are still together, all I needed was his right arm on the inside. And we do, it's basically the same thing, right? <coughs> come back. So we're here, I come up. And we catch. The big difference is that this is on the outside, so I can't like. If this is here, it's definitely easier to do this, but you don't always have that choice depending on how he defends. Okay, so we're here. I come up. We catch. Okay, and I'm catching elbow back, palm facing me, and I come back. And I get my finish. All right, make sense, guys? All right, let's get started. One, two, three. Okay, so now let's go from the situation where we caught the heel and we're going to rotate back to controlling and then finishing the heel up. All right, so climb on top and we wouldn't stop here. Don't we? we caught the heel here with the palm facing our chin. Okay, now how we rotate, like obviously one of two things could happen. He can go this way. And this is like a, this is a lot simpler to deal with. Come back. Let's deal with it all the way. Let's deal with um, let's deal with going this way because it's it's gonna teach us uh, more about control. All right. So here I catch the heel, bring my elbow back. Now this arm, it's very important what I do with it. I can't bring my elbow into the mat. If I bring my elbow into the mat when we rotate back, this is like unbelievably awkward. Right? Like I'm like this you're probably gonna lose the heel. Do you guys see how that slipped? Okay, as soon as you catch the heel against somebody good, what they're gonna do right away is they're gonna be trying to slip, right? They're gonna make it as difficult as they can to slip. Uh, or it could even be the case that he's just aggressively like pulling and pushing his leg. He doesn't really even know what he's doing. And if your grip is not solid, the slip happens anyway, even if it wasn't even something he did deliberately, okay? I think like, like a really high percentage of heel slips almost happen accidentally. Like the guy's just panicking, he's like just moving his leg and stuff, and then the slip happens because your control wasn't good anyway, all right? So we're here. First thing you do is you catch with the palm facing my chin. Now, when I rotate back, I don't go on my elbow. I have to tuck my left elbow into my hip. And as I do this, my chest compresses in, and I come up onto my forehead. Now, as soon as I'm here, my left hand catches the knee like this. See how I go all the way under the knee, and I bring my elbow back, and I compress my chest in, so that when I roll through, I land. Now, we don't want to stay on our shoulder. This is, this is not good. You come up here. So now we have like a really, really solid bend on the knee, and we can get a strong heel to finish. 
All right, so again, I'm here, I catch the heel. The elbow comes into my hip. I can't rotate like this. If I, guys, look at my left elbow right now. Can you guys see? Okay, so if I go on my left elbow, right, and I come up, wait, he's trying to heel slip? He's gonna heel slip. Like, it's, it's so easy, guys. It's really, really not to heel for. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm here, now my left elbow, is gonna come into my hip. Now, look at how my hand, let's rotate. Can, can you guys see what I'm doing with my hand? I'm not sure. Really. It's just rotated like all the way. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, yeah, right here. So guys, we're here. I'm gonna look what this elbow does. Not this, this is very bad. This is good. I go elbow to hip, and look, my hand, it basically goes right to the spot I need it to be at his knee. Right, you go here. So it does, I'm accomplishing two things at once. I'm facilitating the roll of my torso better, right? And I'm also getting my hand in position to grip his knee. The reason why we're gripping the knee is that what I want to do is, at this point, I want to compress everything in. I want to compress everything in so that there's a good bend in the leg. If his leg is straight, 100%, you can still get a good heel hook, all right? Definitely possible. But it would be better if I had a good bend in his leg, all right? We're gonna talk about why when we talk about leg like, breaking mechanics. So, <clears throat> um, but before, like a big mistake I see is people focus too much on breaking mechanics and they don't think about negating his late stage defenses. Like, I have to negate his late stage defenses if I wanna be able to reliably actually finish the heel hook, okay? So, what I do is I have a full script. I, uh, I grip at the knee, and I hold everything tight. I don't want the knee to start doing this, okay? I want to hold everything in place, okay? Once I've held it in place and I've negated some of his late stage defenses, the next thing I want to do is take this foot, and I'm going to step on his hip. Because one of the next late stage defenses he's going to try, if he can't turn this way to heel slip, then one of the next things he might try is spin this way. Okay, and like a lot of the time that's not, like you're not gonna be trying to heel hook guys that are willing to fight like to the absolute last minute. But when you're going against somebody who's just like completely committed to not tapping at all costs, like them spinning is a viable defense, right? Like there are people who will spin and then you, I've seen this many times in tournaments, they spin, they go out of bounds, the ref just stands you up again and you gain like nothing for, for all this work you did. Okay, so how do we stop that? This stops the heel slip, okay? The next thing we need to stop is the spin. This is not stopping the spin, but this is. It's very simple. All we have to do is have some kind of uh, method of making it difficult for him to raise his far hip. So he's got his near hip and his far hip. Now this is not gonna stop him from completely raising his far hip, but what it is gonna do is, when I connect my hands and I'm doing a heel hook, I'm not gonna do this hard, at least don't worry. You go to raise your far hip. I'm, I'm breaking his leg as he's doing that. Whereas if I had this, I think you guys would be shocked at how easy it is for him to actually do this. Now, a lot of the time, he's still gonna get hurt. If I'm like bridging in and heel hooking him, right, and he goes to do that, he's still gonna get hurt. But crazy people, and I, I have seen people at Nagas do this, okay? Like, yeah. I, I have videos of me, like, uh, one time when I was a blue belt, I went against, uh, sorry, I think it was a pro belt. I went against like a, like a really good, like, leg locker, like, who was a black belt. It was like, one of the scariest matches I ever had at that time. And I caught, it was an outside hill on the guy. Hypothetically, right, if we were like grappling on like a football field sized match, I don't know, would I have eventually gotten it? Maybe, but that's not reality. The reality is, you roll out of bounds in most matches, the ref's just gonna stand you up, okay? I've seen that at ADCC trials, okay? Like, high level stuff, doesn't matter. You're rolling out of bounds, and the ref's probably gonna stand you up. So what we wanna do is we wanna stop the roll, with this. Or not stop maybe, but slow it down substantially that we can get the break. Now once I put the foot on the hip, what I'm gonna do is I take my my elbow, goes into my hip, we talked about that already. Now I'm gonna, gonna connect my hands. I had the full script. I'm gonna connect my hands like so. Now see my left elbow guys? This is not where we want it. I want it here. So what that might mean, depending on how long your arms are, you might need to turn, so look at my wrist guys, you might need to turn it a little bit so palm starts to come up. We don't want to finish like, like this is not good. 
But I usually, because I have pretty short arms, I'll usually have to have my thumb facing my chin. Does this make sense, guys? So like in a perfect world, my wrist would stay facing up, I would connect my hands, and my elbow would go over the shin. But it depends on how long your arms are about whether that's possible or not, okay? So I go here, here, and here. Does this make more sense, guys? And now, look at my left elbow, it goes here. Now, the next thing I'm gonna focus on is bringing my chin into the ankle so my shoulders are not straight. If the shoulders are straight, this is gonna lose pressure. Like the trick is, what I'm trying to do is apply pressure to the top of his thigh while I draw his heel over my far shoulder, okay? Well, here. If this is straight, there's less, I see he's a pretty significant difference, right? Do you see how much, like this, I put so much energy into the heel hook, whereas here, the, it's, what, sorry, you okay? No. It's, it's way less substantial, the amount of effort I'm actually putting in to get the finish, okay? So what I want you guys to think about is, the, the main reason why the bend in the leg is crucial is because what I'm doing with my legs is, I want to put pressure to the top of his thigh that is pushing his thigh this way as I'm pulling the heel over the, in this case, it would be my far shoulder. Does that make sense, guys? So if the leg is straight, it's not, I'm not really putting a lot of pressure on the top of this thigh, okay? You can definitely still get the finish, but it's, it's weaker, all right? When it's here, the pressure is way stronger. So what that means is, when I pull, do you guys see what's happening? Like, without my body in the way, you can kind of more clearly see, like, the mechanics of what should be happening. The toes should be pushed this way, and they're getting pulled like this, as I'm pushing this this way. And right now, Elias can move his hips, because obviously my, my body's not around it, but in real life what would be happening as this is happening is each end of the ACL is getting pulled, and then there's gonna be a tear, okay? Does this make sense, guys? Yeah. Yes? All right, do you guys have any, we kind of went through a lot of this part. Do you guys have any questions? No? All right, let's get started. One, two, three.